shows what fasting does to your brain and why Big Pharma won't study it. Below is a TED talk given by Mark Matson, the current chief of the Laboratory of Neuroscience at the National Institute on Aging. He is also a professor of neuroscience at the Johns Hopkins University, and one of the foremost researchers of the cellular and molecular mechanisms underlying multiple neurodegenerative disorders, like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. I'd like to address the big pharma issue first, since there have been countless examples of research manipulation at the hands of pharmaceutical companies in recent years. This is why Harvard professor of medicine Arnold Summerelman told the world that the medical profession has been bought by the pharmaceutical industry. It's why Dr. Richard Horton, editor-in-chief of The Lancet, recently stated that much of the scientific literature published today is false. It's why Dr. Marsha Angel, former editor-in-chief of the New England Journal of Medicine, said that the pharmaceutical industry likes to depict itself as a research-based industry as the source of innovative drugs. Nothing could be further from the truth. And it's why John Ioannidis, an epidemiologist at the Stanford University School of Medicine, published an article titled Why Most Published Research Findings Are False, which subsequently became the most widely accessed article in the history of the public library of science, blows. Dr. Madsen also addresses this issue toward the end of his video. Why is it that the normal diet is three meals a day plus snacks? It isn't that it's the healthiest eating pattern, now that's my opinion but I think there is a lot of evidence to support that. There are a lot of pressures to have that eating pattern, there's a lot of money involved. The food industry, are they going to make money from skipping breakfast like I did today? No, they're going to lose money. If people fast, the food industry loses money. What about the pharmaceutical industries? What if people do some intermittent fasting, exercise periodically and are very healthy? Is the pharmaceutical industry going to make any money on healthy people? Lecture summary and the science to go with it. Mark and his team have published several papers that discuss how fasting twice a week could significantly lower the risk of developing both Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. Dietary changes have long been known to have an effect on the brain. Children who suffer from epileptic seizures have fewer of them when placed on caloric restriction or fasts. It is believed that fasting helps kickstart protective measures that help counteract the overexcited signals that epileptic brains often exhibit. Some children with epilepsy have also benefited from a specific high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet, normal brains, when overfed can experience another kind of uncontrolled excitation, impairing the brain's function. Matson and another researcher reported in January in the journal Nature Reviews Neuroscience. Source. Basically, when you take a look at caloric restriction studies, many of them show a prolonged lifespan as well as an increased ability to fight chronic disease. According to a review of fasting literature conducted in 2003, calorie restriction, CR extends lifespan and retards age-related chronic diseases in a variety of species, including rats, mice, fish, flies, worms, and yeast. The mechanism or mechanisms through which this occurs are unclear. The work presented below, however, is now showing some of these mechanisms that were previously unclear. Fasting does good things for the brain. And this is evident by all of the beneficial neurochemical changes that happen in the brain when we fast. It improves cognitive function and stress resistance, increases neurotrophic factors, and reduces inflammation. Fasting is a challenge to your brain, and your brain responds to that challenge by adapting stress response pathways that help your brain cope with stress and disease risk. The same changes that occur in the brain during fasting mimic the changes that occur with regular exercise. Both increase the production of protein in the brain, neurotrophic factors, which in turn promotes the growth of neurons, the connection between neurons, and the strength of synapses. As he explains in the video, challenges to your brain, whether it's intermittent fasting, or, vigorous exercise, is cognitive challenges. When this happens neurocircuits are activated, levels of neurotrophic factors increase, that promotes the growth of neurons and the formation and strengthening of synapses. Fasting can also stimulate the production of new nerve cells from stem cells in the hippocampus. 
He also mentions how fasting stimulates the production of ketones, an energy source for neurons, and that it may also increase the number of mitochondria in neurons. Fasting also increases the number of mitochondria in nerve cells, since neurons adapt to the stress of fasting by producing more mitochondria. By increasing the number of mitochondria in the neurons, the ability for neurons to form and maintain the connections between each other also increases, thereby improving learning and memory ability. Intermittent fasting enhances the ability of nerve cells to repair DNA. He also goes into the evolutionary aspect of this theory, explaining how our ancestors adapted and were built for going long periods of time without food. A study published in the June 5th issue of Cell Stem Cell by researchers from the University of Southern California showed the cycles of prolonged fasting protect against immune system damage and, moreover, induce immune system regeneration. They concluded that fasting shifts stem cells from a dormant state to a state of self-renewal, triggering stem cell-based regeneration of an organ or system, source. Human clinical trials were conducted using patients who were receiving chemotherapy. For long periods of time, patients did not eat, which significantly lowered their white blood cell counts. In mice, fasting cycles flipped a regenerative switch changing the signaling pathways for hematopoietic stem cells, which are responsible for the generation of blood and immune systems. This means that fasting kills off old and damaged immune cells, and when the body rebounds, it uses stem cells to create brand new, completely healthy cells. We could not predict that prolonged fasting would have such a remarkable effect in promoting stem cell-based regeneration of the hematopoietic system.